This is Dan Abbott of Southern Maine Community College, and you are looking at a sign that I recently completed for the building I work in. I created the sign using SolidWorks and then printing individual panels on a 3D printer and then fitting them together. And I'm making the sign, I'm sorry, I'm making the video to show you how I did the joinery for that. The printer we use is a Stratasys U print that's limited in its build size to approximately 8 inches by 8 inches. The sign you're looking at is 2 feet by 3 feet. It's a backer board, which is 3 quarter inch plywood covered in a plastic brushed aluminum laminate. And the pieces, the, each of the panels, is uh, created separately and then fitted together. What you're looking at is an assembly file consisting of the backer board. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 panels individually printed on the printer we have, which is a U-print. The floor indicators, indicators, of course, could all be printed at once, but these others had to be printed one at a time. If we go and take a look at one of the sets, this is for the help desk, you can see that it has raised letters, so I just went and used the letter option and the print option in, um, in the sketch mode. Some fonts work better than others. I finally found one that worked pretty well. I have also a half of a uh, boat model that's just sort of embedded on the uh, um, individual panels in relief. And then I split them using what I call a curved tongue and groove joint. And I curved it so that as you look into a little gap, you'd almost immediately see the color behind it so it wouldn't look like it was too, uh, too deep. And that was to hold all four panels together. And to make sure that I could fit them together, I made these little butterfly recesses and then made butterfly splines to go in between them. The holes I left the boss on so that we could uh, screw it right down. I put the recesses on each panel just to save plastic because it was taking so much plastic. I built this by making it a multi-body part by extrude cutting all the way through um, a much larger panel after I put the text in. I just placed the cuts in such a way that they interfered as little as possible with the text. I did have to split a couple of names and these are printed all in one pass so if at some point Brandon LaBerge or Alex Kennedy were to, to leave us then I would um, have to print an entirely new panel and in some cases more than one. Uh, I did a split um, body and then body keep, so we're going on to just one body. So this is just one of the panels as I created it. Uh, and this panel has the tongue and groove scarf joint that has a gap for the butterfly, it has a little space in the back. Then I brought that into GrabCAD. And in GrabCAD, here's the same piece. If we take a look at it, it shows up as a model and you can see that it is hollow on the inside, it's got some ribs. I have to be careful, because it's a multi-body piece, I combine bodies in such a way that if it comes in without checking assemble, it gives you two pallets, one for one body, one for the other. If you pick assemble, however, it puts them together the way they were when you saved the uh, part file. So this is what it looks like from the top. And by the way, that was a front plane um, view in SOLIDWORKS because the front plane when you go to anything with CNC or anything else with G-code becomes the top at least in the way I think about it. If we look at this from one side though, what I wanted to do here was to print till it just stopped under the letters and then pause so that I could then come back and change color and have it print in white and then stop. When I change colors, I change to blue and then finish the print in blue. Uh, I don't really like the perspective view, so we'll get rid of it. So now, if I go back over here to the show slide preview, when that comes up, it goes through the process of how it would slice this. And you can see it's taking a little while, so I'm going to pause. Okay. Uh, with everything going on, it had a lot to think about, so it did take a while for that to build. Now what I want to do is to add a Z-pod. In order to do that, I'm going to take the slider and I'm going to go down until it's just below the letters. I have to be a little careful with this. Because if I take a look at it like that, as I come up, all of a sudden the letters appear 
and they appear at layer 41 right there. That's the exact transition between no letters and the beginning of letters. You want to make sure you don't start this thing a little too soon because if you try to start it too soon you're going to have a blue background and blue letters or a different color. So when I first did it I was a little cautious. I knew 41 was the right layer but I went to 42 but since then I've discovered that if I go to 41 come over here and add a Z pause now when I actually print it it asks do you want to look at the Z pause I continue and it will pause at that point and the machine will just wait until I do something to it to uh, get it to continue and what I do is remove the white plastic and add the blue plastic. Now this particular piece and the U print is pretty good at estimating how long something is going to take and also estimating how much material it's going to use. If I go to the queue, this is going to take 12 hours to print that one panel. So this process took place over several weeks and there was a lot of driving back and forth in my house to switch plastic after something should have finished. Uh, but the result is going to be um, what I show you next with an actual video. I'm going to put these together. So here's a different version of the same sign in pieces. And you can see that it has a tongue and groove. Pick it up. Take a look at it. You can see, I think, yeah, how it's scarfed. So it's at an angle. That's just so that it would be white or blue, depending on where you're looking, as soon as possible inside any cracks. Those are the butterfly spine. Got the little piece to hold the boat together up front because it's so far away from the back sign that it flexes and opens up slightly. So that's just a little bracket to hold it in place. Turn this over. See what I did is haul it out the back. That's where the splines go. They're tapered, by the way. I don't know if that's obvious right there or not. So when they go in, they snap into place like that to hold the whole thing together. So here I've slid them all together with the tongue and groove joints and I've kind of purposely left them slightly askew. That's what the butterflies are going to take care of. You can see it still looks like one piece. I flip it over. When I put the butterfly spine in here, oops, sorry, put it in here, it'll pull it together and it'll line it up and down. So here there's in the back side with the spines inserted. And you can see I had to snap them in there. And once they go in, the sign itself, when you look like this, lines up pretty well, including the boat. But I am going to put this little bracket on the back side of the boat that I made just to pull it together a little bit. There's a the bracket holding it together. That's what it looks like when the boat comes together. 